Welcome. In this video, we're going to be doing a review of how to track time in Function Point. Tracking time in Function Point is typically done from the dashboard, although there are other options. Keep in mind that your dashboard may differ from what you see here based on how you've chosen to customize your dashboard. If you do see a list of custom dashboards you've created, select the Classic option to see what we have here. On the Classic dashboard, the Timesheets panel is located on the left side. Tracking time using the timesheet panel is very simple. We can select from either jobs or tasks. We'll start with jobs. If we want to put time against this orders page job, all we need to do is click on the timer icon beside the job, which populates our timesheet with the job that we selected. We can then choose the service that we're working on. Keep in mind that this list of services may differ from the services that you track against in your function point system. Let's say I'm working on some design. I can then populate my duration field with the, with the time clock by selecting start, which will count for us. Once this is over 30 seconds, hitting stop then populates the duration automatically. However, however, we can also enter this manually, let's say perhaps two and a half hours. We'll then enter a description of what we did and submit our time. It adds to our daily total and also to the job we tracked against. Let's look now at tracking against a task. I have a sketching a roughs task for a annual report job. It's due on the 30th. I have eight hours in my budget to complete this and zero actual hours against it so far. In order to track time against a task, the task must have a status of in progress. If I want to put a timesheet against this task, all I need to do is click on the timer icon beside the task, which populates my timesheet with all the information that I need, including the job, the service, the task, the description of what to do. I can then enter my description below, enter my duration, either with the time clock or manually, I'll say perhaps two hours, and then submit the time. And then add store daily total, and also real-time to the actuals against that task. This allows us to always see our budgeted versus our actual hours. An important thing to mention about tracking time from the dashboard is that as opposed to a duration field, depending on your system preferences, you may see a start and stop time field. If so, this is asking you for the actual time of day. The process is the same as what we've reviewed, except as opposed to entering a duration, you would actually enter the time, perhaps 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., for example. Let's move on from the dashboard. You'll notice in the timesheets module in the main navigation bar that we have the option to find timesheets, but also to add, open up a weekly view, or a smaller timesheet window. Selecting Add Timesheet brings you to an Add Timesheet page that is very similar to the panel on the dashboard. It has a job field where we can enter a short form and it will give us a shorter list or the result, or we can click on the magnifying glass to see a list of all the active jobs and select the job that we're working on. We can then choose the service. We'll say perhaps some documentation. If there is an applicable task, it will be selectable. If there is not, the field will be blank. We can then enter a description, enter our time using a duration, say two and a half hours, and submit the time. That will then navigate you to the details page of that timesheet. Let's take a look now at the weekly view. The weekly view tends to be pretty popular. This allows us to see a week at a glance. We have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. This allows us to put in our time across the entire week, including descriptions, and monitoring our daily and our weekly totals. We can use the calendar to navigate to previous or future weeks. And entering in new items here is very simple. Just like before, we can enter a short form or select from a larger list to populate our job field. We can then choose the surface. If there is an applicable task, it will be selectable. If not, the field will be blank. Enter our time, description, leave the field, and it saves automatically. There is no submit button. Everything you do is saved the second you leave the field. 
This means that you can confidently close this window without fear of losing any of your data. The last option here is the timesheet window. And this is very similar to the timesheet panel on your dashboard, except it just takes up less screen real estate. It's a smaller window that you can collapse, make even smaller if you prefer. And just like before, we have a job, service, and task fields to select from. The last option that I'd like to show is tracking time from the task itself. If we navigate to a task's details page, let's say the sketching a roughs task we were looking at earlier, you'll notice from the task's details page, there is an option to add timesheet. Select add timesheet, and there's only one field, and that is duration. The reason being is that because you are already looking at the task, the job, service, and task fields are already populated. We simply enter the amount of time, the description, and submit. That concludes this video on tracking time. Please check out more of our videos for more helpful information on using FunctionPoint.